I think the first reaction is something that we've been talking about here, right? Even early on when there was uh, uh, just a little bit of hope that he may come good, right? Uh, we just felt that uh, uh, this wasn't a good move uh, by Manchester United. And that's, you know, the first problem lies with me, for me, with Manchester United for allowing him, you know, Ola and his friends and, and George Mendes uh, uh, to get him back to Manchester United uh, because nobody else wanted him, not at the money that he wanted and not at the level of play that he's been. And I, I, I understand I understand that us mortals, uh, you know, it's difficult to uh, to understand when you're coming down from such a high and one of the greatest players ever. Uh, but I think you, you also have to know your sell-by date and that there's going to be times where no matter how good you've been going forward, uh, there are different solutions, solutions needed. So Manchester United, for me, are just as uh, guilty and responsible as Cristiano Ronaldo. But, uh, you know, the first thing that came to my mind was... You know, it felt like, hey, Manchester United, uh, um, you're making me look bad and I don't like it. This is really how I got that. that that's that's exactly what was happening is that you hear for me and not the other way around, as it's uh, something that I think we've known throughout his career. Right. I mean, it's always about a team. There's no I in the team. But when it comes to Cristiano Ronaldo, he comes first and the rest is secondary, I feel. So you don't like what he did. You think he shouldn't have done this? Well, of course not. I mean, you see, it's, it's calculated, even though he said it, that he was going to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they he says that uh, the coach and the club hasn't shown him respect. Come on, give me a break. They showed him plenty of respect. I think I think Ten Hag, you and I talked about it last week and the week before, has let him down easy. He's given him all kinds of chances, even though, as I've said, it's calculated on te Ten Hag's uh, uh, part as well. He knows that he cannot build Manchester United with Cristiano Ronaldo, but I think he's been very good to him. Uh, better than I would be. And and the timing of that is, of course, after Manchester United uh, winning at the last moment at Fulham as well, where he was sick, uh, given benefit of the doubt, he knew that he's now, by now, not even second, maybe third choice because Anthony Marshall's back. He knows that in the big games, he doesn't play. He only plays in Europe and, and maybe uh, games that United feel they can win, maybe some home games. Uh, uh, so he knew this was coming, and obviously this is this is his way of showing respect to the game, to Manchester United, to his teammate, teammates, present uh, and former. I know it's harsh. Everybody's had their take on it, and everybody's jumping on Cristiano Ronaldo. But look, I mean, legends, the true legends, don't do stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I mean, for him, on his part, maybe he could say, this is my way of taking back control and being able to actually sit down and give my say on it and give my part on it. We talk about those games that he has played in, Janish, though. Has he played his last game for Manchester United after this? He should be. I mean, this is something that Ten Hag probably wanted to do right away, but he was smart enough and intelligent enough to know that he has to massage that, right? He's made some tough decisions, and that included uh, uh, Maguire, to some degree, Ronaldo, but he knew what you know, such an iconic figure that you have to tiptoe around that until you find a solution. As a, as we all know, they've been trying to unload him. Nobody really wants him. So you have this asset on your hand that affects your club and your team and this rebuild every moment because everybody is talking about Ronaldo. Nobody's talking about Manchester United, Ten Hag, what they're doing or what they're doing, what they are not doing. And and the truth of the matter is that Manchester United are doing well without Cristiano Ronaldo, and they'll probably do even better when he's done. Uh, I mean, look at this. That last moment win against Fulham, fifth place, close to where they want to be. It's not perfect by any means, but, you know, you have someone in the background that uh, asks for attention every second of the day. It's not easy to manage that. As Arteta with Mesut Ozil, with Obama Young, we've seen these situations before. And, and look, Cristiano obviously is a wonderful player and he's been one of the best in the game. Uh, no questions about that. But he forgets about the team. And look at Real Madrid. They've been great before him and they've been very good after him. Juventus have, has been winning before uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has come. And even though they're struggling a little bit, I don't necessarily think it's because of Cristiano Ronaldo has left. That's a bonus and they'll get it right. So when you look at everything, and if I were Cristiano Ronaldo, I'd ask my, myself a question. How did I get where I've gotten so far? Is it because I've won every trophy for Real Madrid, for Juventus, for Manchester United? Or is it because there were a number of players that helped me to get to the level I've been, right? It's, look, I mean, 
it seems to me that maybe playing individual sport would have been better because then you have control over everything and you can do everything that you want. So certainly in the end, to to do this right now, obviously he's saying sayonara. Thank you very much. This is it, right? I mean, Ten Hag, there's no possibility that he lets him play again. I mean, at least I don't see it. No possibility of that. And, you know, to sit down in an interview like this, again, look at me. I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. The whole world needs to listen. If you wanted to send a message like that, he could have done it through beat writers at Manchester United. He could have leaked that every which way. Yeah, I nobody respects me here. The club's not right. Some of these may be right. Uh, you know, we're not there, uh, Kay, to, to know. But there's so many different ways. But he wanted that uh, attention, right? I mean, to pick uh, Piers um, Sorry. Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, there you go. I, I almost thought I got it wrong. Mm. Pick Piers Mo Morgan for that, right? I mean, it just smells of me, me, me again. Because everybody knows that when it comes to that, uh, he, he, he may be the one that gives you... <laughs> The most in terms of everybody looking at you, listening to you. I just, I just think it's a, it's a bad look. I've always felt that way. Uh, I think we've always got pelters when we go against Cristiano Ronaldo, um, but I think it was easy for everyone to see. This is no surprise in my book. So, oh, you uh, like you're saying he could have put it out through beat writers. We know in a mix zone afterwards he could quite easily say he's upset. We've seen him after Champions League finals saying he's upset. Is there not an argument to be made on his part, if I were to play devil's advocate, that he says, at least now I'm going to sit down, I'm going to say everything all in one place on a platform where I feel it will be released to everybody and everybody will get to see how I feel? Well, I think he has the right to do it. Uh, you asked me if it's a good look, and I think it's a bad look. I don't remember the grades of the game doing that. And, you know, I I'm not saying that they're all squeaky clean. They probably, you know, during their careers, the Maradonas, the Messies of the world, the Cruyffs, the Beckenbauers, uh, th they've had their grievances, of course. But uh, I think there's just ways to do it. If you say that you love Manchester United and you respect, you're asking for respect while giving none to everybody else in the game. It's as if the only thing that matters is your happiness and you throw everybody under the bus, rightly or wrongly. He can go out there and say, you know, but, you know, to say that uh, that I don't even know who Ralph Ragnick is. Come on, give me a break. A, you do know who he is. And B, if you ask him for respect, be nice. Be nice because you knew exactly who Ralph Ragnick was. So in that interview, um, he didn't show. I, I just don't think that you know, there's class that comes out of that from such a great player. And by the way, he's done a million things, million things good off the pitch as well and all that. So, you know, we have to talk about it. And I'm not looking for a different take that I haven't seen already because we're uh, you and I may be one of the last to react on this. But it just it's just pretentious and and something that we've always felt that Cristiano Ronaldo comes first. Everything comes in second. That's the feeling I get. Now, even if this is a wrong take, you can't tell me that that's not the first take that 99% of people get when they listen to that. Well, it's your take, Janish, and that's what matters. That's why we're asking you. So obviously that's your opinion on all of what we see here. Now, what next for Cristiano Ronaldo after something like this? Because there's a lot of talk about there being, well, people saying there were no clubs interested. I'm sure there were clubs interested, but then you obviously know what comes with it, his wages, what it's going to cost to bring him in. Does something like this put potential other suitors off further than just wages? Well, of course, of course. I mean, the, the next thing I, I think afterwards, when it all settles down, uh, I, I think there should be a reflection. Uh, if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, on yourself, you look back and you say to yourself, yes, I've had a great career. Yes, maybe it's not over. I'm still, I still want to play, which he has the right to. And if you look at him, the way he's trained, uh, uh, the way he's looked after himself, he can certainly play. But now he's got to realize that maybe the top, top level is not going to be looking at him. Not because of the interview, not because of his character, because I, I don't think overall it's terrible. But uh, but I think they just they just understand that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a baggage that comes in. Do you think that's going to change if he even if he goes somewhere to to play for free? The wages don't matter. Even if he offers himself to play for free, he's still going to be want to be the focus of of the team. He's going to demand that he plays all the time, every time, every game. And you can't have that at the highest level of football. You just can't. Let's talk about a young star then who is shining. If Cristiano Ronaldo is a star that will, probably will be moving on from Manchester United, 
one name that everybody's talking about right now is Alejandro Garnacho, and rightly so, because it's been quite a few weeks for him. What exactly are we witnessing here, Yanish? A young player that scored a couple goals and 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 has a lot of promise, uh, and he was still trying to figure out what it is to be at a big club and uh, and a big time football. As we know, he's had his issues already with a little bit of an attitude, and that's a learning process, I suppose. Uh, uh, you know, this is a, quite the opposite of Ronaldo. I mean, maybe sometimes an attitude saying I'm good and I need to play, and there's zero issues uh, I have with that. When you're young and you feel that you're good enough, you want to play. Uh, but I think we just have to wait. The last thing he needs is the pressure from you and I and everybody else uh, uh, to perform right now. It, it's a tricky situation, as we know, with the club, with Manchester United, uh, even aside from, from uh, a Manchester United situation. Um, I think uh, Ten Hag is starting to get his arms around the club, but I don't think we're 100% sure yet what success will mean under him in the near future. We will see what happens with the board and with the owners, because the one thing that you got to give Cristiano Ronaldo, which which is right, is that that club has not been run properly. Even if you take the owners aside, the structure of it, uh, that's something that he's... Uh, He's right about, although I'm pretty sure he knew what he was getting into it, right? This is not just happening overnight. When he re-signed with uh, United, he knew. But I think if you look at Garnacho, uh, uh, I think there's promise. There's a lot of talent. Uh, but let's see if there's consistency, if he can do it uh, game in and game out when the time comes, when he does get those chances. So let me just end there, because it's just something you picked up on that it's reminded me of with Manchester United. Yet started to pick up under Ten Hag. We can all see that. What suggests to you that he can continue to build on this and it won't go back to what we saw under the previous coaches and that Ronaldo won't be able to say at the end, see, I told you, in the way that now people are looking at what Jose Mourinho said, that the achievements that he had with Manchester United were up there among the best achievements. What suggests to you under Ten Hag that maybe things are moving forward finally for Manchester United? I think that, you know, there's there are players that are there when he came in that are getting a little bit better, right? And I think his management of the players and of the team that's currently, I mean, this is not the end product. Let's let's look at, I mean, even even yesterday I was watching that game and you say to yourself, well, uh, I mean, no Ronaldo, which, you know, he would have been an option if, if he was available. And as we all know, uh, after everything that we've said, he's still capable of coming in and changing a game. Uh, no Jaden Sancho, no Anthony, key players, right, in a game like this, which was very, very important. Even, even if they drew in the end, I think United would look at it as mm, maybe not the best way to say goodbye for the season for the next 45, 46 uh, uh, days. But they did find that, that win without two, three, maybe four key players, uh, the law. Uh, obviously uh, was suspended as well. And we saw Malasia playing right back, struggling <laughs> in that game, but they found a way. So I think the toughness and not being afraid of making decisions from Ten Hag is very, very important because there's got to be somebody that not only stumps his foot, but also people listen upstairs, right? Because Ralph Ragnick, when you think about it, I also thought of him in such a way. And he was trying to do it. He just didn't have the strength to 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 go through it in a way. And ultimately, pe people upstairs didn't listen to him. Uh, not enough anyway. But I think in Ten Hag, I think he's the sort of uh, figure that you listen to and maybe you're a little bit afraid of, which ain't a bad thing if you're a player. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.